couple of years ago, we asked our people to give us like a return on investment for the money they had spent. And it sounds ridiculous, but the average was about 1,200%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if, if you spend a couple few hundred dollars a month and you get one deal every few months as an investor, it's a huge profitable return on your investment. Text me and I'll text you back. Text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. Tick tock, you don't stop. I will help you make your paper stack. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at now? 205-964-5243-9-you-know. Hello guys, this is Ty, aka The Flip Man, and today I have two guys here that are real estate lead magnets from my guys from all the leads. How I was introduced to them for a few years back was through ProBase, but they actually offer more types of leads than just that as far as real estate leads. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. Guys, how's it going? Doing great, Ty. Thanks for having us back. It's been, what, like three, four years? I think since um, we've been a while. Yes. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, 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 something like that. So, um, but you know, glad to be back. Glad you reached out to me so we can, you know, refresh what we already have out there and uh, hopefully get some people some leads, which means or should mean turn it into some money, some bread. All right, so what I'd like to do, guys, just go ahead and get into just the, the, the bare bones of it. We'll get into what you all offer. But as I said before, one of your primary products is probate. And you have different levels of how people can generate leads through just that probate process. Why are probates a particularly good lead source to potentially find a motivated seller, which should turn into some great deal? If it's okay, I'll start with that. And then Tim can get into the details. Um, I was a realtor and an investor for me many years, what attracted to me to probates and what gave me the idea for this company was, you know, back many years ago when I used to prospect FISBOs, expireds, past clients as an agent and as an investor, you know, there wasn't a lot of competition. Today, everybody's phone is ringing off the hook. And what I love about probate is a few things, really. Very often, the people that just inherited the property are not local. Uh, there's usually multiple heirs, so they have to sell the property to be able to split up the money. And they're usually pretty reasonable. It's found money. So so they're not looking to get top dollar. Mm. And probably the most important thing, there isn't a lot of competition. Like I said, especially when they're not local, you know, there aren't realtors and, and there aren't investors reaching out to them for the most part. I mean, there may be some, but you know, for the most part, it's a very unique lead source that is not real well worked and the people are very motivated. So it kind of ticks all the boxes of what an investor would look for. Okay. All right. So with that being said, let, let's just define probate number one, you know, because that word is thrown around a lot. So let's just do the simple definition of it. Tim, go ahead. You, you want to do it or you want me to? Sure. <laughs> well, probate, the probate is the legal process that settles the estate of someone who's passed away. That's kind of the simple definition for it. Every state has its own guidelines as far as what kinds of estates must be probated. Some have, some have dollar limit if the estate is... Uh, less than a certain dollar amount. It doesn't have to go to probate. If it's over a certain dollar amount, it has to. Some states require it regardless. There's a lot of different rules and you know, each municipality is different based on what's going on in the marketplace. So, I mean, but that's very simple. What we do is we work with them when they become a probate. And what we mean by that is that when a personal representative has been assigned by the court to be the person who works on behalf of the person who died. So it's a legal document, it's a legal action at that point. We start with that docket, that data that comes from the court. And that's what we provide. If you look at it just from the status of the data that we provide, we provide the decedent's name, last known address, date of death. I would provide the personal representative and all the contact information to get in touch with that personal representative, multiple phone numbers, addresses, email address, if it's available. We also provide the name of the attorney that's been established for the case, if indeed there's an attorney. That's the probate process. After that, it goes through the courts. It gets settled in the courts. Any debts that were owed by the person who passed away get settled during that process. And that's really the main function of the personal representative is to settle those debts. Once the debts have been settled, anything that remains as an asset gets sold. Obviously where the investor comes in is that if there's real estate involved, sometimes you have to wait for probate to be fully settled and cleared out of the court for them to be able to sell it, or they can receive authority and sell it before the court case gets settled. In the case of you know a breadwinner passing away, sometimes that's very, very important because there's no money in the family 
they've got to sell something to continue to exist to keep moving forward. So that makes it a great opportunity for an investor. And Ty, if I could add to that, I know from the first round of dealing with you, a good number of your people are wholesalers. Right. So it, we talked about why it's good for an investor. In my opinion, it's gold to a wholesaler because yeah. like Tim just said, somebody died last month and you can get the property under contract. You've got weeks, you've probably got months until you have to close on it. It gives you plenty of time to go out and find your end buyer, oh, yeah. you know, without actually having to close on the property. I got you. Okay. So, and I don't know if your tool or your service offers this. Do you have like a each individual state in the timeline on how fast a deal could happen? If they're ready to sign and, you know, actually sell the property from the date that the person dies from the point that the property can be sold, do you have something like a timeline for each state to say, hey, in the state of Alabama, if the person died today and all the heirs, even if they didn't have a will, because I understand Alabama a little better than any other state, if they had a will, how fast can they sell? If they didn't have a will, how fast can they sell? And assuming everything, everybody's on the same page as far as the heirs. Is there a way to do that like three months, two months, two weeks, a year or whatever? Do you have it set up in that way? Not really. Unfortunately, there's so many variables involved in that. I'll give you some personal examples. I lost my dad a while back and we were literally able to close out my dad's estate in two weeks. Wow. And, and there was property already that needed to get sold. It was sold to a third party. My parents lived next to a church and the church had already expressed an offer to buy it, knew the attorney personally, had friends in the court system, and we just got it done. It was very easy to get done. And, you know, I knew a lot of folks and passed it to the court system. That same transaction, that same court, other structures could take two years. It depends. Like you said, if the heirs are all in agreement, everybody's happy, the stars align, you can get it done quickly. But unfortunately, there's really not a rule of thumb. The best answer I can give you is that in each jurisdiction, a family attorney, a family law attorney, or a probate attorney is the best answer for that because they know how long it takes to walk something through the system. It also depends on when it can get scheduled on the court docket. Sometimes the courts are super busy, sometimes they're not. There are just too many variables to say it's this amount of time. And every state's different, every county's different. Oftentimes, every court and every judge is different. <laughs> I don't want to overcomplicate this. So far, we've talked about probate, but one of the reasons that we reached out to you, we do have a new product. Really, it's particularly beneficial to investors called pre-probate, where we can actually get the information right after the death. And a lot of those don't have to go through probate. You know, they're already in trust. So it does vary greatly. Like Tim said, it could be anywhere from next week to next year. We do have tremendous support. So if one of your investors gets involved and needs help, we have pretty much good experience at almost every county in the country. We can give them a guideline. Here's the best way to handle it. Here's this particular situation. Here's what I would do and how we would do it. You know, we'll walk them through all of that. Okay. All right. So let's do this then. So let's go through what you guys have been doing in a while. Now, obviously there always can be variables and monkey wrenches thrown in the, in the situation, but assuming everything went perfectly from start to finish, from a wholesaler's perspective, what's the first thing they should do with a lead? Assuming this lead actually turns into a check, take us through that process of what you recommend and a wholesaler should do? Well, we, we have a system. What we recommend, whether it's a wholesaler, an investor, or a realtor, is send out a letter, follow the letter up with a phone call. It's more of a warm call when you've sent them a letter and then kind of repeat. You know, we the, the minimum that we recommend is send out a letter a month for three months and follow every letter up with a phone call. Because, you know, you may, the death may be two weeks ago. It might be too raw. They might not be ready to do anything yet. And I mean, some of our people do it for five, six, seven months or longer. They'll send out the letters. It's, you want to be there at the time they're ready to do something. And we do teach our investors to don't just call and say, I want to buy your property. You know, that's what everybody is doing. If anybody else is contacting them, say, you know, I specialize in helping people that have inherited property and there's a lot of different ways I can help you. I've got an estate sale company. I've got a clean out crew. I've got a contractor. You know, what do you need help with? A service mentality and kind of win the business. All right, before we go any further on that. So see, I was under the impression that don't even bring up the death situation. You know, you just reaching out to them. Hey, I want to buy your house, you know, or whatever that particular house. But you're saying you need to acknowledge, hey, I know you just inherited a property and I know this could be a difficult time that you're dealing with. But, you know, our company, what we try to do is to make that transition as easy as possible possible based on your circumstances. So we offer a probate attorney. We have a realtor. We have someone that'll cut your lawn. We have a move out company. We have someone that can repair a roof, you know, just whatever you need. We're going to probably have a service that can make it a lot easier for you without having to put a lot of thought into it. And then that transition and oh yeah, if you need to want to sell the house then boom, we would love to work with you on doing that also. 100%. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah. Go what ahead. I'm going to say is that what we really try and, and teach our people to do is to really be 
become a force in the community around that particular discipline. In other words, we don't necessarily, you know, leading with, hey, you know, I know you've got a house to sell. You know, in, particularly in the pre-probate space, you may be dealing with somebody who's, you know, it's a very raw wound. They just lost somebody. And with pre-probate, literally, you could receive that lead on a Monday for someone who passed away the week before. Mm. Because we literally start with the notice of death and we're very careful to collect it. So we train people to be very, very sympathetic. And if you're going to talk about the property, it's my research indicates that you may have inherited or you may be in a circumstance where, you know, the death of a loved one or something like that. Are you dealing with that at this particular point? But leading with all of the services that you can provide, you know, in the event of a death in the family, here are all the things that I can do. And you talk to them about all of the services that you can provide. And oh, by the way, if in fact there was real estate to sell, I can offer help in terms of potentially providing you with a cash offer or helping you get that property listed and sold for the most amount of money. And we teach our people as investors, if you're an investor, make sure that you have a realtor or multiple realtors that you work with. Same thing. If you're a realtor, you need to be working with multiple investors so that you always have the ability to dispose of any real estate that's there. I want to go back to just one real quick thing and then I'll let you get back to your questions. The other thing about the letters and postcards that Jim mentioned is that we also, we are a commercial printer. So we do that for our customers. When they need to go do that, they get a bunch of leads every month. We literally have it on autopilot. So we automatically automate those mailings. And our recommendation for them is as much as your budget will allow, the more frequently you contact people, the more likely you're going to be there at the right time at the right place and be top of mind when the motivation to sell occurs. And that's really what it's all about, being in touch. And Ty, you weren't wrong about some people prefer not to mention the death on probate. It's typically been a few months. And by that time, they've hired an attorney. You know, they're ready to deal with it on the pre-probate. Subscribers prefer not to mention it. You know, hey, this is Ty. I do a lot of business in that neighborhood, you know, helping people who are looking to sell property. And it looks to me like you might have an interest in 123 Main Street. Don't even mention the death. So you can do it either way. You know, if you're a direct person, you want to get right to the point. I do a lot of business in the neighborhood. It looks like you have an interest in that property. How can I help you? There's no one size fits all. You know, we recommend you try both ways and see what works better for you. Okay. Are your lists mainly just for residential or your service will provide, I guess, leads on any form of real estate, land, commercial, you know, of course you got different layers of commercial or, you know, mobile homes or mobile home parks, or, you know, just basically for residential or can someone request a list for any particular property type? Generally speaking, what you're going to find in terms of this would be personal real estate. So that would be if someone happened to own a commercial building, but they owned it in their personal name. Yes, it would certainly show that up. If you wanted to find commercial real estate or any kind of list that you're looking for, you kind of opened up the Pandora's box there. We're also a list provider of any kind of lead. We refer to them as demographic leads. If you're looking for farming leads, you're looking for a set of zip codes that you want to prospect for a farming. You want to find people that are of a particular age and a particular income level. We can provide all of those things. But from a probate standpoint, generally, we're going to show you anything that you, in pre-probate certainly for sure, anything that the decedent owned anywhere, we're typically going to find that. So if it's in their name, we'll show it up. In the probate side, we offer a product called Probate Plus that does the same thing. We do a national search to find everything that we can find that that person owned and we provide that as well. So, but those are generally residential and individual owned pieces of property. It could be land, could be motorhome, could be raw land, could be commercial, but only if they owned it individually. In their name. Okay. Right. Now, of course, like I was doing a live last night and part of my demonstration on the topic was pulled up a lot of the number of uh, multifamily property types in the country and the tool that I was using, it gives you an option to say, is it in a company's name or a person's name? And 1.2 million multifamily properties and the filter was supposed to be for five units or more, which makes it commercial, were in the person's name, you know? So that's one of the reasons why I was asking because I thought about last night. So we pursue a lot of self-storage deals and a couple of deals that we're working on right now, the person that we're dealing with acquired the property through an inheritance. That wasn't their thing. That was daddy's thing or whatever. So that's why I asked because the opportunities could be really substantial with those property types. All right. So assuming someone wants to suggest that you offer other types of leads, what would you say the next layer of leads that you think are probably the most attractive to someone that wants to target individual owners, hopefully find a motivated seller? Divorce. Divorce? Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Wow. Okay. And, you want me to talk a little bit about that real quick? Well, most definitely. <laughs> 
So outside of probate, our whole business is based on transition. We're looking for people who are in transition. We know that somewhere a fuse has been lit. And obviously when someone passes away, something's going to happen. It's a major impact on a family. Same thing for divorce. Divorce is unique in that divorce also can help you find at least two opportunities and sometimes three, because you may find that the settlement of the divorce requires the marital home to be sold and the proceeds of that get split between the two people. You may also find almost every case, one of them is going to be moving out. They're not going to continue living together. But you know that person's moving. That could be somewhere you're going to find another purchase for that person to make. Or if you're a pretty much full service person, if you're a realtor, you may find the opportunity for them to move somewhere else, might find a rental opportunity, certainly might find a home for them to buy. You may find also that the person who is in the marital home and stays there, they're going to move eventually. They're going to have the same issue. They're going to either need to rent or buy. So you have two or three transactions that come out of divorce. Now we've just started dealing with divorce and the key element there is to get it on filing, not on decree. If you get it after it's already been settled, then you're dealing with a single deed. You're dealing with something. It's already over. It doesn't matter because at that point it's been handled. The court has banged the gavel down. Somebody's mm -hmm. moved. You're already living someplace else. It's settled. It's done. It's over. I guess in that situation, I guess sometimes someone, they could be married, but the property is only in one of them's name, right? And I guess it just depends on, I don't know, situational, but can they sell in the process of a divorce? I guess it just depends on- Absolutely. How Okay. Yeah, it's not like probate. As long as whoever has the authority to sell it, they can sell it at any point. Okay. At any point. Now, the court may put a stricture on it and say it can't be sold, yeah. but that's very unusual for that to happen in the case of a divorce. They usually don't do that. And sometimes as part of the divorce, it's already put on the market as soon as they decide to file, signs up in the yard and, you know, the property is going to get sold. What we typically do is that we, it's the same circumstance. We train our folks, we provide the divorce leads as a group. We train our folks to have the same level of empathy when they're contacting them. It's a mailing program. We try to provide both the address of the plaintiff and the defendant in a divorce case so that we have the data and they can contact them. And we tell them to reach out and basically say, hey, I realize you're going through a tough time and here's what I can do to help you and create a sourcing for things that they can do that can be helpful. Things that become important there are if there are children involved, if they're looking to relocate, you need information about school districts and things like that. There may be geographic requirements. You know, one or the other of them can only only live in a certain area based on what the court is providing. So you got to make sure that you stay within those things. So we literally just kind of stuck our toes in the water with divorce about six months ago, started beginning to provide that. We tried three or four years ago to do it and we didn't do it at all then because the only thing we were able to get was on decree and that becomes a public notice. Now we've been able to successfully get them on filing and we can't do them everywhere. It's not as fully available, but where it is, it's a gold mine. Okay. That's a gold mine. Interesting. Okay. So obviously with probate, divorce, those are just indicators that there could be possible motivation there, you know, to get a heavily discounted piece of real estate. Okay. So if someone wanted to get started, of course, I'm an affiliate with you guys. So, you know, make that clear. But if someone wanted to get started, is it done county by county or is it done state by state? Or you just have an open option to build list anywhere for one fee? How, how does it normally work? We provide the leads on a county by county basis, and we provide all of the leads of that type that have been filed in the last 30 days. So if it's probate, that's what we give you. If it's pre-probate, it'd be all of the notices of death that we've investigated for that period of time in the last 30 days. Same thing for divorce. It's all the filings in the last 30 days in that county. That's always the way we've done it. In certain marketplaces, we have broken the market up into segments. So for example, in Los Angeles County, uh, the city of Los Angeles we broke it up into seven, six different areas and they're too big. Same thing mm -hmm. for Cook County in Chicago, Broward County and Dade County in Florida. We break those up into smaller units. Where it's necessary to do that, we do that. Okay, so whenever you select a county, so you're going to get all of the leads from that county? That's or, it. You can, <laughs> or, or you say, hey, I only want to get leads sent to me that if it's multifamily, that's the only thing that I want. I only want that type, that property type. So if nothing happens for three months before I get one of those, I don't want to see anything until I get one. Is it set up that way or are you just going to get all the leads? 
you have to sift through. Different, it would be a different program to do that. Our normal program gets you all the leads for that type. So we don't break out multifamily or anything else. If someone wants a specific type of lead, we can absolutely customize the program for them. But I'll tell you, quite frankly, 99.9% .9 of anything that we do is all county by county and they get them all because that's where the opportunity is. If you're looking at multifamily and that's what you want to specialize in, then you want to pull those leads specifically and ask for that. And you're going to work on them. You'll get everything that you can get for those. And probably every 90 days, you'll get a refreshed list of something you want to order, but you'll order it as you work through them and as you make those contacts. But again, 99.9% .9 of everybody that we deal with is a subscriber. They're a monthly subscriber for all the leads of that type in their county. Okay. All right. Okay. Makes sense. All right. So we said, we talked about uh, probate. We talked about divorce. What's another lead type that your service can generate? The next thing that we're actually beginning to move into, and we're going to do it in a more unique way. And I won't be able to give you a whole lot of detail on it because we're playing around with it. <laughs> But we're working on FISBOs and expired. There are a lot of people that do that. There are a lot of people that provide that. The thing that you need to know kind of about what we do is we're a systems oriented company. So we don't just sell leads. I mean, we do, we're a lead seller and we know that we've developed a niche in the probate marketplace where we're pretty much perceived as the kind of the high end source for that. We provide the best quality of data. We research it better. We dig in, we give you the right stuff. So we do the same thing. But in addition to that, we provide a bunch of different letters that you can send out from a contact standpoint. We get you the ability to put an email campaign together if you need to do that. If we can get the email addresses, we can do that. Obviously we train you. We have hours and hours and hours of data training. We do weekly training programs. We have ongoing three and four day training programs. We have multiple hours. We have certification programs. So we really educate our people. They really become specialists. And if somebody wants to, for example, make probate a pillar of their business, we're there to teach them how to go do that, provide them the best leads, put it on autopilot. They just deal with motivated sellers. They do it every month. They do it over and over and over. And you know, Ty, consistency is the key in everything. Oh yeah. If I could add to that real quick, from our last experience, the last go around with your customers, I mean, some of them have more time than money. Some of them have more money than time. <laughs> some of them don't have a lot of each eat of either. Mm -hmm. But I know a lot of your people have full-time jobs that they would like to eventually work their way out of, and they don't have a lot of time. They can really simplify this. We can teach them how to put it on autopilot and do it themselves. We can also do it for them. We will customize letter. We'll mail it out for them. We'll even make the phone calls for them if they're not able to do that. So depending on your level of time and your ability to do it yourself, We'll teach you how to do that or we'll either do it for you, you know, if okay. you don't have the time or the access. When our salespeople talk to somebody, they'll ask them questions and figure out what's the best way for that person to go. All right. Now, just to sort of wrap up a little bit, guys, could you share a, maybe a success story or two of someone that's in your network over the years, maybe even something recent? a simple process, maybe a difficult process, and they ended up with a substantial payday. I have two, Tim. One of my favorite ones, one's a realtor and one's an investor, but one of my favorite ones was we had somebody come on our mastermind call and we always asked for success stories. And he said, yeah, I just started getting your leads two months ago, he said. And you know, the first month I sent out letters and I did five deals. And we said, wow, that's fantastic. How long you've been doing this? He said, I just started. <laughs> he was a, he was a friend. <laughs> Oh, so, we, got a, we got a rooster crowing on that one. Oh, that's a good one. I love it. Uh, but what was cool was he felt he was a realtor and an investor. And I think two of the deals were listings and three were properties they had actually flipped. But the beauty of it for somebody who's new, he was dealing mostly with absentee owners. They didn't know the difference between him and somebody else in the county who had been around for a long time. We had another one that it was vacant land and the agent was working on it. He was more interested, I think, in listing it, but he was also an investor. And the sellers didn't even realize it, but it was in the path of progress mm. where it was in the process process of being rezoned commercial mm -hmm. and he partnered with a developer. They jumped in and bought the property and the developer is building 165 townhomes. Oh, wow. And he's going to get commission on all 160 and a piece of the action, but all 165. I think he's actually getting the listing. He's both a realtor and an investor. He is both he's of that case. He's going to be the realtor for all of them. That, exactly. He's an investor with the developer. He's getting a piece of that and he's going to be the listing agent on the resales and get a commission on all of those. And I don't want to make it sound like that happens. 
happens all the time. I mean, we tell people the biggest mistake people make, they try it for a month or two and then they give up too early. These leads season extremely well. You know, a percentage of them are ready to do something right away. A percentage won't be for a few months and some of them a year from now, you know, they'll finally pick up your letter and call you or they'll be ready to do something. But I can tell you the agents and the investors that work it, they tell us it's their best ROI. A couple of years ago, we asked our people to give us like a return on investment for the money they had spent. And it sounds ridiculous, but the average was about 1200%. percent <laughs> if, if you spend a couple of few hundred dollars a month and you get one deal every few months as an investor, it's a huge profitable return on your investment for sure. Wow. Nice. Really nice. Okay. Well, guys, I really appreciate y'all spending the time and sharing this with the audience out there. They can actually show you how to automate your business or they can actually provide the automation for you. All you have to do is just obviously pay the monthly fee or the service fee and uh, just wait on the leads to come in. And there's a lot of support. They have weekly calls. The support is great, you know, just from the time that I've dealt with them or whatever. And I need to do a lot more, but I want to focus more on the commercial side. I'm going to talk to them once we finish this. But yeah, so anything that you guys want to share before we get out of here? I was just going to say, if you just want to dip your toe in the water and you want to learn more, every Thursday at one o'clock Eastern time, we do a mastermind call. It's open invitation. Anybody can come. It's all the leads.com forward slash live. And if they do get involved, we'll make sure that we know that they came from you for sure. But uh, feel free to join. It's an open discussion and it's a good exchange of ideas, you know, in residential, commercial, realtor, investor, everything. Yeah. The only other thing I was going to say is that I'm delighted for them to come to your side as well. That's a great way to do it. And if they're just roaming around and I don't want you to lose credit for bringing us folks, we appreciate that. Anytime you're on our site, if you go to allleaves.com forward slash flipman, you'll also be able to get the information that you need. So we believe in taking real good care of the folks that sent people over there and you do a great job. You're one of our, our top folks. We love working with you. So I want to make sure you get credit for bringing all these great folks to us. All right. No problem at all. Um, one other thing, guys, I know one of y'all is the tech guy. Has AI affected you all's business yet? N not affected, but have you started to implement anything as far as AI yet? Gee, Jim, are you going to take that? You just doubled the length of this call if you asked him. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead, Jim, please. <laughs> so I won't go into too much depth. Yes, the answer is yes about that. The challenge with AI right now, you know, everybody is an expert. So the beauty of using AI is that AI allows you to move quicker. That's the whole value of it. So the good things about it are that you can aggregate important information quickly. It helps you build your understanding of a particular marketplace. If you're using AI tools and you want to understand, for example, what's a great way to talk to someone who just lost a loved one about real estate? Well, AI is going to give you lots of answers about that. They'll oh, yeah. give you, people always ask us for scripts. Well, a great place to get that using AI. AI can give you lots of that. And the beauty about it, that AI is really where we're focusing on right now, is predictive analysis. Mm. So that you can look at a lot of different factors and say, okay, here's everything I know. I know that it's in a particular marketplace, it's in a particular dollar amount, lots of data. What's the most likely of these hundred opportunities that I'm looking at, which are the top 10 that I might want to focus time, money, and energy on to go market to? So over the next year, that's one of our big focuses is try to do great predictive analysis on the data because we encourage people to spend money to contact those people, spend harder, do higher value mailing pieces, really get their attention and not so much energy on the ones that are less likely to sell. That's what AI is doing for us right now. And that's okay. just scratching the surface. I got you. Okay. Wow. I love it. Okay. So guys, we'll probably do another one of these in the near future. But again, I really appreciate you, Tim and Jim, to uh, showing up and reaching back out to me. So because we did this before, but the audio was a little tricky. So I'm glad you guys shared all your knowledge and your service and opportunity. So guys, probates.com or all the leads.com forward slash flip man or if you want to join their mastermind all the leads.com forward slash slash live there's no excuse try to provide as many ways to make money with zero to very little money as possible and this is another tool that you can put in your hat so again thanks guys and as always like to say we'll see you on the flip side Text me and I'll text you back. Text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. Tick tock, you don't stop. I will help you make your paper stack. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at now? 205 964 524 Yep, yep. 205 964 You know.